All right, Joe here. Welcome back to We Need to Talk. This is, of course, the show that looks at football on the internet over the past seven days. The seven days that has seen Jack Grealish get absolutely raging when someone ruffled his hair. And your keeper was a bit special tonight, wasn't he, particularly in the first half? Um, yeah, the keeper. Daniele De Rossi gets a full first-class makeover just so he could go to the Roma Lazio game. And the biggest goalkeeping shithouser of all time. And Dovecki himself is going to step up and try and put his side oh, back into the lead on. as Giansopoulos comes out to play hey! some games. Well, there's a slice of cheese for Nico Giansopoulos. Anyway, this week we need to talk about the January transfer window. Right, it's deadline day, but I'm shooting this in the morning, so not every single deal has yet been completed. Please don't shout at me if Tottenham or United or Chelsea suddenly sign a superstar and it's not included. I've done it as late as possible, so just relax. That's because today we're going to be ranking, in 2019 fashion, the biggest and best signings from the January transfer window in tier list format. We did it last summer. It did all right, about 140,000 views. That's good enough for me. We're gonna do it again for January. There's not been very many good moves, but bear with. By the way, not everybody is on this list because quite frankly, some of the moves are that dull, it's not worth including. The likes of Enzo, Lloyd Deutsche, Dijon to Wolves, I'm not ranking. We've just picked some notable ones. So first up, we've got Erling Braut Haaland, the man who broke my heart by not signing for Manchester United, our key transfer target, going from Salzburg to Dortmund for 20 million quid. Uh, five goals in 59 minutes so far for big Erling. Not too bad, still just 19 years old, but he does have that buyout clause in his Dortmund contract of 75 million euros. It is offset by the fact it isn't active for another 18 months, though. Why Man United didn't agree to that boggles the mind. Now we're hunting after Danny Ings. No offence, Danny. I know you're scoring goals this season. But this simply has to be an elite tier signing. Possibly one of the best January signings of all time. Next up, another European name, Christoph Piontek. A very rogue move, this one. AC Milan to Hertha Berlin. Now, I'm aware her to Berlin got new investment, major investment, back in July 2019, which is why they're signing the likes of Piontek and the likes of Lucas Toussaint, who they've sent back on loan, so isn't going to be included in this list. Last season, I think he was AC Milan's top goal scorer and Genoa's top goal scorer, despite having a split season with both clubs. Still only 24 years old, signed by AC for 30 mil, sold for 27 mil. But do you know what? Because of the amount of clubs that need a striker, Man United, Tottenham, Chelsea, <coughs> <coughs> bit of granola stuck in my throat there. I'm putting this in the very bad to shambolic. I'm even gonna put it in the shambolic category. This is going straight in shambles because he's gone to Hertha Berlin, 13th in the Bundesliga, when every top club needed a striker. Rattle this one off very quickly then. A very big move. A Dynamo Zagreb's Danny Olmo joining RB Leipzig. Again, highly courted by some of Europe's elite, including Barcelona, his old team. Still only 21. I can only see this one going well, given that Julian Nagelsmann has some freakish, magical ability to turn any attacking player into an absolute genius. And his numbers have been pretty good at Zagreb. The only difficulty is Zagreb playing the Croatian League. So for all of those reasons, and the fact it was only 30 million euros, not a massive risk for Leipzig, I'm putting Big Danny in the very good category. Next up, a man who made plenty of headlines, Christian Eriksen, Spurs to Inter Milan. Still only 27 years old, obviously historically one of the Premier League's best creators. I'm sure everybody now has seen that argument between me and Hamill on Twitter, where he compared him to Cristiano Ronaldo. House. Uh, but he is going to be earning €360,000 a week, Inter Milan's highest wage. I think Lukaku is second on €300,000. They did make a profit, Tottenham Hotspur, signed him for about the 12 region, sold him for 17 and a half. And it does now leave just Eric Lamella from that Gareth Bale money. All of those boys, other than Big Eric, have gone. However, 
given the fact he wanted to leave Spurs for a Real Madrid or a Barcelona, a clear step up, that the fact he's only 27 and has gone to Inter Milan despite they're still competing for a Serie A, I'm only going to put this in the good category. If it had gone to Madrid, this could have been elite. But Inter, is it even a step up? Couple more ones for Inter Milan, then I'll rattle these off very quickly as a duo. Ashley Young, United to Inter Milan, earning a reported 100,000 euros a week, which is about what he was on at Manchester United. Do you know what? It probably works in that league because you don't have to have an awful lot of pace. He can play as a wing back on both sides. I believe he started as a left wing back in Conte's first game and then moved over to the right. With the injury problems they've had, I think this is fine. This is going in good. Unlike Victor Moses, who's going in bad because I'm fully aware he hasn't had a good season since Conte left the club, but he's been struggling in Turkey. Surely Syria, surely Syria is a step too far. Trying to compete for the Serie A title is a step too far for Victor Moses, so I'm going for bad. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, free transfer after his contract at LA Galaxy ran out, joining AC Milan. Now, this is a big old risk, in my opinion, for a team that are eighth in the league and have already been in financial difficulties in the past to sack off your 24 year old Piontek to Herta and replace him with Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who is apparently quite good friends or likes to play alongside Leao up front. I think it's a risk. Look, he's a big personality. He might score a few goals, but he could also massively upset the apple cart. This is going no higher than good, given that he also had that major knee problem at Manchester United and the MLS is meant to be the retirement league. Anybody that comes back from the MLS feels like they're over the hill. Moving over to the Premier League then. Oh, the first one. Bruno Fernandes, if there was a God tier category, he'd be going in there. A rank above elite, only preserved for the very best in world football. No, he's probably going in the very good. I think very good, just underneath elite where Erling Braut Haaland is. United have been crying out for a creative midfielder and we've pretty much filled that hole. 46 and a half million pounds, feels like a good deal, £70,000 a week wages, I think Sporting wanted closer to £80 million, so Ed Woodward getting some good business done there. Obviously, we've spoken about his creative numbers in the past, he's been a captain, Ollie's looking for leaders, and to be honest with you, if he can do better than Jesse Lingard, Andreas Pereira and Juan Mata, then it's a positive. I think this is a very good signing. Sander Berge is up next, joining Sheffield United for a record fee. This is a fantastic signing. Really like Sander Berge, still only 21 years old. I think he's going to work really well in Chris Wilder's system. West Ham definitely should have gone for him. He was spotted at Man United's training ground earlier in the week for about two seconds, and I was quite happy about it, I'm not going to lie. And quite frankly, for what has been by far the best transfer announcement of the window from Billy Sharp, He's no Norwegian. He plays for the Blades with John Egan. We're playing in Europe next season. It's Sander Burge. I'm putting Sander Burge in the very good category. Bergvine to Tottenham Hotspur, £30 million, still only 22 years old. Bit of a risk given that Jose Mourinho doesn't often sign young, talented wide men. He likes a more established name, but five goals, ten assists so far this season. I think he's been the third best creator in the Eredivisie behind the Ajax boys, Dusan Tadic and Hakim Ziyech. And quite frankly, Tottenham need forward reinforcements, don't they? If they don't get a striker over the line today in the form of Olivier Giroud, it allows them to play Son through the middle, play Bergvine and Lucas Moura up front with him. Plenty of pace. I think this is a pretty good deal. This is going in the good category. Minamino, £7 million, very good. Shock Michael Edwards is the most efficient man in the league. Liverpool working yet more miracles. They're reportedly the only team in European football that knew about that £7 million buyout clause. How did that happen? Whilst we're on the topic of Tottenham, Giovanni Lo Celso's deal has been made permanent this window, so we're going to include it. £27 million for Giovanni Lo Celso is a piss take. A piss take. I'm putting it in the elite category. Alongside Erling Braut Haaland, I've said it. Another Tottenham player this time, somebody who's left the club, Danny Rose, 29-year-old fullback joining Steve Bruce's Newcastle. He's obviously wanted out of Tottenham for quite some time, didn't get that move to Watford back in the summer. Then he said he was going to say and see out that 18-month contract. 
hasn't happened. Reportedly, a bit of a problem in the dressing room behind the scenes. A very good signing for Newcastle, in my opinion. Didn't suit Jose Mourinho's system. A massive upgrade on Paul Dummett. Two seasons ago, United bid 50 mil for him. He's now left on loan for six months. And that was Jose bidding. Danny Drinkwater, 28 years old now. I suppose he's a sort of McGinn replacement with that ankle injury still plaguing him. And again, I don't understand it. He's been bought in on a short-term loan, but hasn't played any football recently. Surely if you bring players in on short-term loans, you want people that are going to hit the ground running straight away and have a massive impact. First game against Man City, looked like he hadn't seen a football in 10 years, let alone 10 months. This is going in the bad. And then we'll finish with Cenk Tosin going to Crystal Palace. Now, Palace certainly needed a striker and Cenk Tosin is a striker. That's probably the best thing I can say about this move. Because of that, it's going in the... I'm being so kind to put this in good. But that miss in his second game. Jeez. Just verging on good. Moving on to the good, the bad and the ugly. The good this week is yet another house this week it's Tommaso Berni who has been at Inter Milan for six years in that time he hasn't made a single appearance for the club he's effectively their grant he's like a third fourth choice goalkeeper but last week he recorded his first red card for abusing the referee after the game was over six years zero appearances one red card pure house Moving on to the bad, and this one comes from Scotland. It's about the man with the worst haircut in world football, Alfredo Morelos, as police in Scotland are now investigating his car after Alfredo Morelos came out of his house to find a man underneath it tampering with it. What is going on? The ugly this week is about Ed Woodward, the Manchester United executive vice chairman, whose house was attacked by a gang of supposed Manchester United fans. Thankfully, Ed Woodward wasn't home. Whatever you think about Ed Woodward and the Manchester United board, this is never right, is it? It's deplorable scenes from Manchester United fans. Whoever you are, grow up. So that's it for this week's episode of We Need to Talk. If you want to hear more about Inter Milan's transfer dealings, I mentioned Christian Eriksen in this video. Make sure you go and watch Continental Club where Doogie and the boys are going more in depth into Antonio Conte's system and how those new players are going to fit. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.